Welcome to section five, part four, where we're going to look at uh, entity data management with data assets. Probably would have been better to do this before selection, but I had a lot of people waiting on selection, so I wanted to get it out there. So there it is. <laughs> Reason why we're going to go into entity data now, so is we can start getting towards the point where we can spawn entities and test all that selection stuff. But the Entities are going to be driven by data assets, and the reason we're going to do that is it allows just independence from any sort of class. We can just have a data asset that can represent, represent any type of entity, and then we can use those data assets to configure groups and can configure player loadouts. So, and the other thing it allows us to is to have modular entities, so we can plug in other data to this this main entity data, such as like uh, we'll, later on we'll. Uh, plug in like an AI data to it that will allow us to have different AI configurations as well. So pretty cool way of doing it, I think. So let's just crack on. We're going to start by creating the, actually we'll create the data types first because we'll need those in the entity data. So there's going to, it's going to be a few enums we're going to need. So the first one we'll just, it's going to be for the class type. I'll explain what these are when we, uh, when we go to use them. I'm just going to have a no class here. This is like a zero in entry. Um, you can use names here, so uh, you, know, you could call it monster A, monster B, or whatever. I'm, for now, I'm just going to call it entity A, entity B. And we can add more later and change them, whatever. So this is how we'll reference the actual physical our test character that we had. That's how we'll point to that. Anyway, next one we'll need another enum, and it'll be for the uh, the category of unit so uh, uh this will have a character so this is sort of where if, if you've got a very different character it's going to have a different base class you put it in a different category and again i'm just going to have a, a zero entry first and then i'm going to have character and i'm going to have vehicle i'll do for now let's create the data asset class I'm going to double up on the word entity here, but we're going to have other ones. So. And that's going to be a primary data asset. The one to control when it's loaded. So now we need to override the, the primary asset ID. That's the getter for the, sorry, we need to override the getter for the primary asset ID. And we're just going to do this in line here. We're going to create a new uh, ID and we're going to create a variable called data type and just get the uh, F name of this, this data type. So in here, we're going to use utility. From asset type. Reason. Notice that that. All right, that's just meant to be data type, auto-corrected to something. So this is this is our link between what we set in the data asset manager in the project settings and the type of data this is. So what happens when the data asset manager starts looking up assets, it'll use this function to get the asset type and see if it's the type it's looking for. And basically that we're going to set this to match what we want it to be. Let's copy this U property. Now we need to add our enums here. So this will be configuration and actually I made a mistake in the data types so I want to use up in this top one as well num class if we weren't if we didn't have that class there we'd have to use that enum as byte stuff so I don't want to use that so this is going to be the uh, category no we want the one coming up Put an F on them. <laughs> uh, e is for enums. There we go, and that'll um, and we'll actually include the the data types in them. Yeah. There we go, and we'll just call this last type. I'm gonna duplicate this. So we can drop the entity. 
And that, that's kind of the, the configuration part. So the rest of it is just whatever settings we're going to have on our entities. I might just put in a few that we're not going to really use just yet, but we'll definitely have. So call this our selection soft pointer on material. And this will be our highlight material. Uh, I might do another one for selected material. We want it to be different. Uh, we'll do some navigation settings. So um, we'll do like um, max speed, or we'll call it default max speed. Another one, default uh, spacing. So that's the spacing that this entity needs between another entity. That'll do. We're not really going to use those at the moment, so uh, we might use spacing when we spawn them, but the rest will be later. So that's our entity data. Now we want to create a group data. So the way I'm working my groups, and we, we can change this up later if we want to, but the each entity will belong to a group of whatever entities. So, you know, like if it's four soldiers, they'll be in a group of four or something like that. So we, now we want to create a data asset where we can configure those groups based on our entities. Same again. I'm just going to copy this same configuration, exactly the same. We, we could even create a, you know, like a base class for data, but we've only got these two, maybe three, so. So now we want some general stuff for our group, so let's do, uh, what should we push? Probably should have put this in our character as well. So we need stuff like, uh, you know, maybe a display name, a description, maybe an icon, things like that. So let's, let's do that and then we'll copy it back over to our actual entity. This play category. And later on we'll be able to use this data to show in UI and stuff like that. Now let's go description icon. I'll do. So this will be icon, and we'll make this soft pointer. So it'll be there. We go, and then and now we're going to need uh, a list of members. So I'm going to put a comment in for this. So this will be a. a putting comments in the U property like that will come up when you hover over it in the asset. So we're going to call this one category configuration. That's what's going to make up the group. And we want it, oh. and then we want it to only display our entity data. So we don't want to have any other data in there. And that's where we use the allowed types. Now this name here, entity data, this is what we put in the project settings, not like the name of the class or anything. This is a name that we use in the asset manager, in the editor. So this is going to be an array of uh, primary assets. We'll just call this members because they're the members of the group. Oh, and we're going we're gonna to move these over to the entity class as well. Uh, that. And then there's one more data asset class we're going to need, and that's the player loadout. So this will be a like a fixed player loadout. So more like a developer loadout rather than a player created loadout. So it would be so it'd be something that the player could choose from. So you, you know you might choose red team, blue team, green team, and they have different units in them or something like that. And again, we can just copy that. We can copy all of this. So this probably would have made a good base class, to be honest. It would probably have to be core or something, so we could use it in every data asset. Don't worry about that. And then this is pretty simple, this one. So I might just, in the group data, just copy this, the U property. And we'll change the allowed types to group data. And this will be an array of uh, primary data assets again. And we call this groups. So you've got your entity data, which is the actual unit, and then the group data, which is configuration of units, and then your player data, which is a configuration of groups, player loadout data. 
So before we go into the editor, I'm just going to come into settings and we want to add We want to create a map here, so a T map. And this will be our entity map. And as the key, we're going to use the class type enum. So it will be. And we're including the data types H as an include. And then the the value here is going to be an actual blueprint. So it will be a soft class pointer on type. And that's the link between entities and your actual class and one other thing i want to do is on our player controller but until we've got like a ui where we choose a player layout we're just going to assign one i'm going to copy this i'm going to have a section down here so we're going to want to have uh it'll be protected and it'll be a, a reference to a loadout so we'll Replicate this, and we're just going to assign it in. We could put it in develop the developer settings, but it's kind of per player, and we'll need to assign it later here anyway, either through the UI or whatever we do. And then in a public section, we'll just do a header now. And there'll be more to come here, but good for now. So we should be able to build now. Let's uh, fire up the editor. Uh, so in our editor now, we'll come into our framework and we'll create our data folder. And we'll create our entities. Create our entity data. So this will just create one test one. And we'll call this DA for data asset and it will be um, uh, for lack of a better name I'm gonna call this A. <laughs> That'll be entity A and then that we've got all our data info here and you can see we don't have an asset name here so Let's do that before we forget. An important step. So in your project settings, go to Asset Manager. And then you'll have your types to scan here. So we're going to need to add one for each of our data assets. And this is where the name comes in. So primary asset type is that name that we used in these allowed types that they need to match up. So the first one is just entity data. And we need to point it to that class. Entity data asset, and we're going to point it to the directory directory that we're in. So this is the directory where the actual data assets live. I mean plugins, entities, framework, data, entities. And notice how I just always put this. Always cook. Not that I've ever cooked it, but just got a feeling it's going to come back to bite me in the ass one day. And so that's that and then we might just create the folder for the next one so we can point to it so it'll be group data or oh, we'll call it uh, groups this will be loadouts and here we do another one group data So that's that. Now in our asset, we can choose entity data. We can choose, uh, so this is choosing the enum that's going to represent this class. So this is going to be entity A for me. I'm going to say it's a character. 
I'm gonna call him this character A. I'm not gonna worry about an icon for now, that's fine. I'm not gonna worry about all that. Uh, max speed, does it usually 600 for a character? Spacing, I don't know, 500? Or it can be a lot less than that, whatever. We'll play with those when we need to. So that's the entity data. So let's go to groups, create a, really wish they'd create a data asset for the miscellaneous is kind of weird. Anyway, the, uh, we need the group data asset. I'm going to call this DA group, should I use A? Uh, group one. Feel free to use names here. So really, we should, because it's, could be group data, group one. So it's the type of asset and then the name. Or it'd be a better name convention. And then the members, so let's all, and we'll make them all that entity A. That looks good to me. So now let's create a player layout, load out. Actually, I'll just, yeah, so I want to change this now as well. To entity data, entity A. And... DA loadout data. Test loadout. Cool. The loadout data. And I'm just going to add my one group for now. And uh, now we have a problem because we don't have a blueprint of our player controller. Let's go to the actual project content directory, framework, create a new folder, players, player, and we're going to create a blueprint class and we're going to use our, we need our, there we go, RF player controller, we'll just call it B player controller, and then we're going to go into our game mode and change it from the direct class reference Let's do the direct class reference to our blueprint so we're using that in the game save we need to go into our player controller and assign that player loadout we uh, put in under entity settings loadout There we go. So we've got our data set up, ready to go. And now we need to set up a method to start using that data to spawn our entities. In the next part, we're going to look at creating a player loadout component that ties into our game state. And this is where, this will probably be the first time where we trigger back to our, if you recall, we set up the phase manager. So we're going to use one of the phases before we start the game to load our player data, spawn the actual player loadout. I'll see you in part five.